Hello and welcome to the Intro to BitBadges course. I am Trevor Miller. I will be your instructor. I'm the co-founder and CTO of BitBadges. And yeah, let's get started. So what is BitBadges? The problem that we identified with BitBadges is that apps and tools are natively single chain by default. So there's a different interface for every ecosystem, whether that is Solana, Ethereum, Cosmos, Bitcoin. If you think NFTs, every ecosystem has their own way of doing it, and NFTs are not compatible between the ecosystems, and there's different inter interfaces for all the ecosystems. It is poor for user and developer experience and the service provider because it's all fragmented, it's all um, not in one place, and it, it's just a poor experience for all parties. You just want everything in one place. So our goal with BitBadges is to help you build multi-chain applications with a single unified interface. You can think of a, a multi-chain app as part of a stack. Um, we feel that payments and wallets are sufficiently being worked on at the moment. However, the rest of the stack is kind of being untouched, and that's where, where BitBadges comes into play. So a little diagram to show you kind of what the what BitBadges offers at a high-level overview is we offer a suite of tools, whether that be a sign-in with BitBadges feature, to a bunch of apps, integrations, and plugins, to you know, your portfolio with different data structures such as badges, attestations, protocols, and lists that we'll get into. And what you can do as an app developer or developing any use case, you can outsource all this criteria checking logic, authentication logic to BitBadges, all multi-chain, and just integrate it into, into your app with a single interface and just allows you to focus on the core utility of your app. I want to highlight that BitBadges is multi-chain and a single interface or the same service for all users from any chain. As you see here, the an Ethereum user owns the same amount or owns the same badge and can transfer the same badge as a Solana user and a Bitcoin user and Cosmos user. And it's not on different chains. It's all in one place. It's all the same service. And that goes for, for any of our services that we provide that it's compatible with users from any supported chain. Next, let's get into our what, what makes up your portfolio. And with BitBadges, your portfolio is kind of made up of four main services or tokens or data structures you can think of it as. The first is tokens. Um, so this has this is an on-chain token standard, has everything from you know who owns it, uh, transferability requirements, uh, has a ledger of activity, and it's a super innovative token standard built from the ground up. Lots of innovative features that have never been seen before, such as you know users can own the same token and transfer the same token um, from different chains, I should say. We also support hybrid off-chain balances as an option, which gives you different trade-offs with where you want to host it. Some might be better for your use case, uh, depending on what you want to focus on with your requirements, such as like decentralization versus availability versus uh, trust involved. Lots of different things. We'll get into that into in the second course, but uh, like I said, a lot of new features, very state-of-the-art token standard, and it can be used for anything from points to memberships to just anything you can create out of the token standard. Next, we have attestations. Um, these you can think of as more credentials. These are more privacy preserving by default. So they support zero knowledge select and disclosure so you can reveal certain stuff, uh, but not reveal other information. It's an alternative to badges because badges are on chain and public, whereas attestations are private by default and can only be revealed to parties that you want to reveal them to. The third is protocols. Think of these as maps, like key value maps, where users can either set their own data or you can set data about them on chain. And these this data can be lives on chain and it re, is reused across all applications in a universal manner. So, for example, you know your prefers dark mode or prefers English. It could be a setting hosted on chain, and then all apps can just hook into that setting and provide the experience based on that preference. And the user only needs to set it once. It's a universal protocol that is just leveraged 
across all chains and applications. And lastly, we have a uh, lists. These are just a more streamlined alternative to badges because they are just who is on the list versus who's not. Badges have all the added complexities of transferability, ownership times, and all the stuff that goes along with the token standard. With list, it's just who's on the list versus who's not. So just a different way of kind of organizing the data. And like I mentioned, we built everything from the ground up. So it uses our own blockchain, and we did it in a way that it, yes, it may not be compatible with a lot of the existing platforms and interfaces, but we took on no tech debt and just tried to build it the right way. This, so this includes being super developer friendly, no code and no smart contracts by default. And by default, I mean probably 95% of use cases will not need any code or smart contracts. And over time, we just add more features and get that number up to 100. Also super easy to use, which we'll get into in this course for users and just all parties involved. If we go back to the utility diagram, it kind of makes a little more sense now. We have the four stuff you have in your portfolio, badges, protocols, attestation, lists. And then you can think of these as like criteria checking as a service. So from your app, you can call into bit badges and check criteria, who owns what badge, who what's on um, who's on each list, what's do they have this credential or attestation, and then hook in with all the other features that we'll get into and again focus on the core utility of your app. The next feature I want to go into is the sign in with bit badges feature. This is a place for you to authentic authenticate your users from any chain all in one place. We have both a digital flow and an in-person flow. So digital is just a, you get redirected to the websites. Think of this like you're signing with Google, Facebook, and you can sign, the user can sign in there and we'll pass back the details to you. The other approach is in-person QR code. So think of this like your Apple wallet or Google wallet equivalent, where you can pre-generate authentication via a QR code and then present that at a gate or wherever. And the QR code is stored in your account and you can export it to email, you can email it to yourself, view it in Google Wallet, whatever you want. Super flexible. And kind of tying it all together is the concept of claims or kind of criteria checking as a service. With claims, it's kind of the background of a lot of BitBadge's development, whether that is gating who owns the badge, gating who's on the list, gating sign-ins, gating anything. With claims, you have access to checking a one's bit badges portfolio, whether this is the attestations, badges, whatever. You have access to if they're signed into bit badges, so the whole sign in with bit badges feature. And also we have 7,000 apps, integrations, and plugins that you can choose from, all no code by default. Super flexible, allows you to build super complex claim flows that allow you to just customize your app any way you wish. And there's different approaches to actually completing the claim. So the first is Insight, as you see on the right here. Users will just be able to claim via a simple form in the BitBadge site. The second is through Zapier. Zapier is an automation workflow. If you're a um, provider, if you're unfamiliar with Zapier, they have over 7,000 apps that you can connect to. And basically, you there's an action and a trigger. Um, the action, or in, in the case of BitBadge's claims, you can do both ways. So you can, upon an action in any other app, you can complete a claim, as you see on the right here, or you can either do a like do success logic, and once a claim is completed, you can like execute something else on any other app, like send an email if this claim goes through, or assign a Discord role if this claim claim goes through. And lastly, it's completely customizable with our API and SDK. Um, you just need to configure your plugins and whatever you're doing. And the site will walk you through all of it, but I just want to note that completely custom implementations are super easy too. It's not limited to what we have on the site, what we have on the in the directory of plugins. Just customize as needed. So yeah, I know that was a lot and it was a high level overview of how the badges works, how you might be developing with the badges. I want to leave you with the site in the docs here. Um, if you want to go check it out now just to get a little more overview. We'll go into a lot of more concepts in more depth 
in the coming lectures and the coming courses. But yeah, just wanted to give that high level overview and yeah, thank you for attending the first lecture.